Hello everyone, today I have a really interesting question for you and we're going to be reviewing calculus and in this video we're essentially going to be learning monotonic functions that's going to be the key takeaway from this monotonic functions and a very interesting way to find out the definite integral it's a little bit non-standard but it's actually very helpful and you'll learn a lot from it so let's begin uh, this is the problem number seven from the ISI entrance exam in 2016 and here we're going, to, we're going to be learning what monotonicity is what monotonic functions are how do we compute definite integrals? Um, and then of course, some book sessions with the ISI and CMI and a similar but challenging problem. This video is sponsored by Chinta.com. Since 2010, Chinta has trained thousands of students from all around the world in mathematical Olympiads, physics Olympiads, computer science and informatics Olympiads, ISI CMI entrances, and research projects for school and college students. Okay, so they have given us that f is a differentiable function, so that f of f of x is equal to x, right? Where x belongs to 0 to 1, and f of 0 is equal to 1. And uh, they've asked us to find the value of this given interval. So, um, well, let's see. They have given us f of f of x is equal to x, right? Now, if I just like to compute the derivative on both sides, uh, I'll get something like this f prime of f of x times f prime of x is equal to 1 and this is essentially nothing but the chain rule um, you know the, the derivative of implicit functions is the chain rule so you find out the derivative of the outer function and the derivative of the inner function right so that's this now here I can make an observation right a very important observation actually um, I can see that f prime x is not equal to 0 right when x belongs to 0 to 1. Why I can say that was if f of x was if f prime of x was 0, then we would get 0 is equal to 1 from this equation over here. Right? And that obviously does not make sense. So f prime of x cannot be 0. So therefore, f has no minima or maxima, right? f has no minima or maxima in 0 to 1. So if it does not have a minima or maximum, what does that mean? So for example, if we have a function like this, right? This definitely does have a minima, right? This is like parabola, I've just drawn a random function, right? Or if we have a function like this, a downward opening parabola, this definitely has a maxima, right? But if a function does not have any minima or maxima, uh, then what can we say? The function f is either completely decreasing or it is either completely increasing, right? Is either increasing or decreasing, completely increasing or completely decreasing, right? There is no minima or maxima, right? There's no point of change of the value of the tangent. So the function f is either increasing or decreasing in zero to one, which is why the function is monotonic. Therefore, f is monotonic. And yes, let me just, um, let me just go over what monotonic function is. So any function really that is either constantly increasing or constantly decreasing is a monotonic function, right? So a monotonic function, uh, typically it's, um, it'll either be completely increasing or it'll be completely decreasing. Right? They cannot be, it, they, it, it won't have a ma minima or a maxima, right? So for example, for any standard function, really, if you have a minima, right, this is the point of minima, right? Here, if you can see the derivative is negative here, if you see the tangent, the derivative is positive. And here it's essentially, uh, you know, the, uh, the sign of f prime x is changing, right? Earlier it was negative, now it's positive. And therefore this is a minima essentially the first derivative test, right? But if you do not have any minima or maxima, that is f prime of x is not equal to zero, you know, for all x, for all x in that interval, for all x in that interval, then that essentially means that the function is either completely increasing or it is completely decreasing, right? And such functions are called as monotonic functions. And this property is called as monotonicity, right? So that was the discussion about that. Now uh, it's given to us that f of zero is equal to one. This is given to us in the question and they've also given us that f of f of x is equal to x. Now if I just plug in x equal to zero over here, if I just plug in x equal to zero, I'll get f of f of zero is equal to zero. And f of f of, uh, f of zero is one, so I'll get f of one is equal to zero. So at x equals to zero, I'm getting y is equal to one. Y is f of x. And at x equals to 1, I'm getting y is equal to 0. So therefore, f is monotonically decreasing. Right? f is a decreasing function. We essentially saw that it's monotonic. 
and it is decreasing so it's continuously decreasing in the interval 0 to 1 right so what can i say what can i say what can i say now i can essentially say that f of 0 will be greater than or equal to f of x which will be greater than or equal to f of 1 right and if i just multiply by negative sign um, the sign of the inequality changes right so negative of f of 0 is equal to negative of x is equal to negative f of 1 and if i just add x on all of these three terms i'll get something like this right why am i doing this because essentially we need to find the value of the integral right and uh, to kind of recap they had to they had given us to find this integral right this is what we had to find right so i'm trying to formulate a term over here that's similar to this and we've actually pretty much reached it to be honest so f of zero is one is less than or equal to x times f of x minus f of x sorry is less than or equal to um x if i just raise this to the 2016th power i'll get this and after this we can just take the integral right the integral of x minus f of x is about 2016 dx is lies between these values x is for 2016 dx and uh, x minus 1 is for 2016 dx okay that's perfect um now what we can do we can just calculate the limit get the value of this integral uh, let me just write this as k because essentially we need to find that right and this is nothing but x is for 2017 divided by 2017 and if i just plug in the limits uh limits we're going to like 0 to 1 so 0 to 1 and 0 to 1 again this is from 0 to 1 now what will this be this is again x is for 2017 divided by 2017 with again the limits from 0 to 1 so so what do we have over here so k is less than or equal to 1 by 2017 minus 0 and k is greater than or equal to this would be 0 minus of minus 1 raised to 2017 divided by 2017 i'm just plugging in the limits right so k is less than or equal to 1 by 2017 and k is actually greater than or equal to 1 by 2017 so therefore k is in fact 1 by 2017 and therefore the value of this integral that they had asked us to find from 0 to 1 of x minus f of x raised to the power 2016 dx is actually 1 by 2017. So yeah, that was a quite an interesting method to solve this. That do exist other methods, substitution strategies, but um, I found this method to be probably the simplest and the most elegant. After that, we have certain book suggestions for calculus and ICCMI, pre-calculus by Tarasov, single variable calculus by I. Maron, playing with graphs, challenges and theorems of pre-college mathematics, mathematical circles, Russian experience, excursion mathematics, and a test of mathematics in the 10 plus 2 level. Now, after this, we have a similar but challenging problem. And I wanted to find out how many integers a are there such that the given function f of x is a strictly increasing function in negative infinity to infinity. So again, strictly increasing means it uh, does not have any local minimum or local maxima. It is a monotonic function. It's a monotonically increasing function, right? And I just wanted to find out how many values of a are there such that uh, it satisfies this property of monotonicity. So if you're able to make any progress on it, uh, do let me know in the comment section. And until then, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much and bye-bye. The programs are designed for students who are passionate about mathematics. And they are personalized with one-on-one -on -one training, individual evaluation, and remedial sessions. The reason Chinta students are successful over the last 10 years because they are taught by mathematicians and real Olympiads from leading universities in India, United States, and Europe. Some of our students come back to teach at Chinta from Oxford, Cambridge, Harvard, MIT, UCLA, ISI, CMI, IITs, TIFR, and IISC. For more information, visit chinta.com.